John Nance is our aviation consultant. He joins us now. John, Professor Hansman, uh, when he was talking to Lisa, said this cannot remain a mystery, that it has to be solved. Why is it so critical? That's it's very critical, Charlie, because we have a whole family of jetliners, and we're not just talking about Airbus, Boeing, too, that are in fly-by-wire that have certain levels of electronics in them. And we have to know whether any of that had anything to do with what all happened out there in the Atlantic. And the indications are what's been found so far was in a relatively narrow debris field about three miles across, she said. Now, we may find more later, but from what we can tell so far, does that tell you anything? Yes, it does, and it kind of reverses where we were yesterday when we thought that debris field was going to develop a, as a fairly large area. The fact that it's contained at three miles, even after 24 hours of drifting and winds and so on, pretty much indicates that if nothing else is found out there, the airplane entered the water pretty much intact. Now, there may have been a part or two that entered someplace close by, but not with it, but it largely entered the water probably at high speed. And as we talked about last night, the last signal from the airplane indicated electrical problems. C could that be fire? It could be, and of course we have precedent in Swiss Air 111 a number of years ago that crashed in Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia, but in that case there was plenty of time for discussion, and in fact that was one of the things that brought them down. They could have made a dive at the airport and gotten in. Here they were out over water, but there was no communication, and there was more than adequate means of communication if they had a problem like that. All right, the mystery remains. I suspect John will be talking about it again. John Nance in Seattle, I'm thank sure. you very much.